We don't have an intro for Carl after all this time. Well, I guess I can. Uh, no, the answer is no. The answer we don't. is no. I'll answer it? for you, Brandon. Well, we I mean, I can play this. It's showtime. <laughs> Work. All right. Carl's fresh from his Largo, Florida performance and uh, had a great show down there. I listened to it on Saturday. Great show. Yeah. Thank you very much. I thought it came out great. Uh, we had a great time with the guys from Revenge of the Sis, who we were doing the show with. They were hilarious. And uh, everyone who I talked to had a great time. So I, I feel really good about the show. You can check that out on our feed. It's the most recent episode of WATP, episode 504. You know, you guys used to have the reigning men theme song for me what happened to that oh yeah we did that's true i don't know if yeah brand we'll stop playing about. rob low stuttering john dax shepherd topher grace bert kreischer dennis rodman hey carl good to see you macaulay culkin yeah, because Carl, I think somebody's suggesting that you you liked men. You talked about men so often that uh, we thought it's raining men would work. And Someone, it, it, it was Mark. Mark was the one who said, "Let's use raining <laughs> men." And then <laughs> I got a like uh, task. I had a homework assignment. <laughs> it doesn't sound like Brandon. me at all. And he goes, "You record <laughs> yourself saying all these things." I didn't know why. And then uh, next thing I know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then it didn't work after a couple of weeks because he kept bringing us podcasts with women. So I ended. Oh, is that? Oh, good. I thwarted your guys' <laughs> yeah, joke. Yeah, you won. No. I, t- I totally forgot that was in the system congratulations on it hey i have to ask you something because i've been i dabble in the dabble verse i feel like i'm not an official member of the dabble verse but i'm always dabbling in it yep. and i just i haven't i mean to follow up on this there's something going on with stuttering john going after mike morse's mom and then uh, this is what i'm reading on reddit and elsewhere is that that mike and Shuli and company just uh, said, no, that's not Mike's mom. But then they immediately removed John's mom. And so the dabble verse is insisting that it is Mike's mom. Yeah. All right. That's very controversial because what happened was as soon as Mike's mom, quote unquote, showed up on John's show, they put a censored sign over the photo of John's mom that used to be behind Mike Morris, kind of like saying, all right, here's the white flag. We surrender. Let's stop doing the parents thing. So that John got like a, the sense of victory there. But then a couple of days later, Mike Moore's like, that wasn't even my mom. He doesn't even have the right person out there. So they were just fucking with John. Now, are people thinking that actually was Mike's mom? I don't know. It seems like it wasn't. OK, now, was the picture of John's mom? Were there sex toys in there and stuff? Well, what happened was. They were eating a salad with a bunch of ranch, and I guess the ranch got everywhere. <laughs> and so her face was kind of covered in oh, no. what looked like ranch, and so John was not happy about that. Oh, she got hit by a full batch. What a shame. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gross. God, that's terrible. Well, okay, I, I, just, I just had to ask about that. I thought that was um, uh, interesting. And I couldn't tell. Did the picture look like it could be Mike Morse's mom? Because I saw the picture of that lady. It could be. Yeah. The nose looked very similar. What happens with John, because he's fallen for this a couple of times with Cardiff Electric. He's always trying to dox people. And so people will create fake accounts, sock accounts and say, hey, John, I'm on your side in this. I got this information here. This is. And when it was Cardiff, it was these photos of Cardiff. Mm. John's like, oh, I'm going to release the photos. And then it would be someone who's not Cardiff because I know what Cardiff looks like. <laughs> and then I'd go, Cardiff, how funny is it? John thought that was you. He's like, oh, who do you think sent him that phone? Like, oh, <laughs> By the way, Cardiff and Great. Turkey had a really nice piece of production as part of your show on Friday. That was very funny. I can't remember the name of it. Straight kid stuff. Yes, because Carl's been following uh, queer kids, which I, I got to say. We've never gotten into that on our show. What's called que- It's called queer kid stuff. Yeah, and it's- Carl. Yeah. It, you probably should bring that to the show someday. There's, what, what's your opinion of that, Brandon? Well, Just curious. Like I said, we've never covered that on this show, but what it is is it's a series of podcasts that's aimed for children, and it ends up being really cringy listening. I, I don't like it at all. I don't like it. It's that's fucking well, crazy. And Teddy, Ted, how old is Ted? Teddy's a teddy bear that she's talking to. He's the character. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Teddy doesn't know anything. Well, let me explain this a little bit better because <laughs> I, I like to bring queer kids stuff on who are these socials and sometimes on who are these podcasts, but it definitely pisses a lot of people off because it's basically child grooming. You yeah. have these people come on, they do the drag queen story time and they, they talk about pronouns. There was an episode we watched just, just the other day where they were teaching kids about bisexuality. And this is not like nine and 10 year olds. This is pre-K children. They teach what being a bisexual means. 
And so Teddy's the naive puppet. And he goes, yeah, but what does it mean to like the person of your same gender? Like, what do you, what do you do? Is it more than just kissing? They're like, whoa, 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 Teddy, we don't talk about that. It's like, well, that's what this is all about though. You guys realize that, right? Well, doesn't Teddy declare that he's bisexual? He sounds like he's about five, five years yeah. old. Yeah, on the uh, live episode, I played a clip where they were talking about pronouns, and uh, Teddy declared that he's non-binary. <laughs> <laughs> As he should be, because he's a teddy bear. And, and they all celebrated that. Oh, my favorite was, we had Dick Masterson on the show for the 500th episode, and there was an episode about consent, was the topic of this queer kid stuff. <laughs> and Dick goes, the only lesson here is no. <laughs> all a child should know about consent is No. <laughs> <laughs> oh well said dick yeah wow very funny but yeah it's 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 creepy stuff and um there's a lot of people who are not happy with Lindsay, the host of that show talking to children about sexuality it's, it seems inappropriate it just seemed a little premature to say the least but yeah. um anyway today carl uh was getting into the uh the Shaq podcast, the big podcast with Shaq, and he had Bert Kreischer on, which I immediately thought, oh, my God, that sounds very interesting. But I, I sent you the Crack Amico parody song, or actually, it's an original song, Two Bears, One Grave. Yes. Um, we, should we just play that with the video before we start? Uh, Let's do it. Yeah, it, I thought it was great. Well, here's go by quick, so you got to be paying attention, but it's fantastic. Absolutely. It's a great song in and of itself. Yep. Here goes the topic. Here we go. This is it. Man, these fat motherfuckers ain't funny. They ain't giving nothing, all they do is take money. And it's so gay to get paid. That's why I'm putting two bears in one grave. And you can never dig them up. I ain't too crack in it, bitch. I'ma hit them up. Gotta get back to the money. Got millions, I stick them up. You might stack a lot of money, but your soul ain't getting saved. Nah. Hey, it's two bears, hey. one grave. Follow Rogan like some faggoty bitches. Pretty sad that we magically knew who cat really did. And some raggedy dick quiz. Careers tragically slipping. And that's why Mac, if he see you in that dramatically different it's actually fitting your reputation drastically shifted something's burning i think you got too many hacks in the kitchen when i break my foot off in your ass you're gonna be practically shitting and pissing and wishing that we would drink your maggoty liquor got a rich lawyer dad you ain't never had to suffer you work for l ron hubbard you with scientology baby need i say more every bit of the reliance stolen from jay moore you a fat bitch why you keep taking the metabolics losing weight but you still got the face of an alcoholic if it ain't a drinking problem then i don't know what to call it you done drink yourself retarded you done but then Lauren Compton Watch him drink more liquor to fuck him up quicker Then I get fucked up for saying the word And that's what you get for licking these dumb bitches Pay ten whole dollars for 69 minutes <laughs> Time you gotta get back to your old gimmick Instead of wearing gay clothes and popping that old Zimpic While you call me gold digger Play around with your little shrimp dick Better let the real father come over and see his kids, bitch You grew up privileged more than just a richer kid Why you acted broke when your dad in the mirror religious your biz? Now we resting in peace and it's got my heart torn how are you forcing your widow mommy to do that fart porn? I'm here for leasing comedy. These bitches got no talent. Swear to God, they hit the lottery. The last gang fast. Them comments were saying hi to me. This year they gon' be quiet like they got a tricky out of me. I'm aiming at your temple like I'm no need for apologies. These motherfucker stars and I don't believe in astrology. Now half a stand-up comedy can't stand me like neuropathy. I turn my sociopathy to self-fulfilling prophecy. Baby, I hit them up. Oh, two crack in it, bitch. I'ma hit them up. Gotta get back to the money. Got millions, I stick them up. You might stack a lot of money, but you're so Ain't getting saved. Hey, two bears, one Christ. Yeah. Hey, he's a big fat liar. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Buns wants fires. Yeah, yeah. He needs to retire. Bitch. Motherfucking Bert Kreischer. Yeah. yeah, he's a big fat liar. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Buns wants fires. Yeah, yeah. He needs to retire. Oh, hey. Take money. Is it my crack, Amico? I see the bands and I'm making them drop. Bird crush your movie, his body gon' flop. 69 minutes, his body gon' flop. Take off his shirt, I'ma take off his top. We know that story about Russia is fake. Work with the mob, boy, you fucking insane. Piping Lee in with your three favorite homies, the closest you come in the run in the train. Oh, girl, looking lonely, man. Better hope that bitch don't start only OnlyFans. Down sad, cause your joke's bad. Now, joke world is your only fan. Tommy Segura, no Joe Rogan made you. Fit in the game, but to either complain. No broken arms, I'm bringing you all the shots and you gon' paramedics. Will save you. Look at y'all fucking pussies, man. All that money, but you still down bad. Trying to suck Shane Gillis dick. Sucking Joe Rogan fat dick. Throwing Tony Hinchcliffe clitoris on God. The fuck? 
Red bar radio anthem, click bow, but shots at random. Yeah. I'm a homies run together like a tandem. Fuck with my man, get abandoned. No for the ransom. Tip a tantrum is what I'm gonna have. Scope AK 47, what I'm gonna grab. Like motherfucker running, I'ma hit him in the back. Confidence fake is your motherfucking last. You got rape. You got rape. You got rape. Wow. Feels like an Eminem song to me. I mean, so there's so many words so fast and so Incredible. well done. Yeah. In the video, too, if you're listening to the show, worth checking out on YouTube because it shows you the lyrics that go by so quickly and it's uh, it's all on point. Crack Amico. Yeah, Crack Amico, M I C O, Crack Just Like Crack. Um, does uh, Was Bert's father a, a Scientologist? Isn't that funny that he worked for L. Ron Hubbard? Because in the episode that we watched of the big podcast with Shaq, Bert tells a quick anecdote about going to a party with a bunch of Scientologists hmm. and them almost convincing him to join. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, and uh, did Joe Rogan have a fat dick? Is that true? <laughs> are you asking me or are you asking that, Mark? I don't know. <laughs> no, I just thought that was funny because when he sang that, it made sense to me. I don't know why. <laughs> so I, I, I know you watch the, uh, the, cringe podcast cringe and these different shows that kind of break down especially this whole world of podcasting yeah and we talked about i presented on the show a month or two ago about tom segura's kind of losing it with his fans because he's just flaunting his wealth so much it's getting kind of gross and people oh, are yeah. turned off by it their views are sinking that whole tequila thing was to me so badly timed and and just not taken well at all and they did make fools of themselves on pat mcafee i i don't know i i feel like they've really taken a fall they should have taken that a lot more seriously beyond the pat mcafee show just showing up drunk like that was a very yeah. bad move but Jeez. their their views alone if you look at two bears one cave that's that's segura and bert show the views have i would say they're half of what they were at their peak maybe less than half Did you know yeah. segura's coming to town is he yeah do you know where he's playing where lca are you fucking kidding me? Oh, he's, he's, I mean, that's an Jesus arena. Jesus Christ. Arena. Uh, what are, can you check the sales? The, yeah, they haven't gone on sale yet. They go on. Okay. I don't, I don't even want to say when they go on sale. Well, I don't want to help them out. <laughs> <laughs> as, as if me mentioning is going to. No, it goes, they I go think he's sale. a pretty funny guy. I just Friday. think they've really screwed up over there. And yeah. their views are, are really dying. They still have huge views, though. Mm -hmm. Well, Drew, I've seen speculation by a lot of people because of things that Bert is saying that he's worried that Tom Segura is alienating the fans, especially because <laughs> he's tied to him with <laughs> well, two bears, one cave. And so Bert Kreischer, I think, is trying to send a message. And if you play my clip number six here from uh, Shaq's podcast, he starts talking about Tom Segura. It, it kind of came out of nowhere, to be honest with you. But this is very telling. Segura's dead inside. <laughs> he's just, he's changed. He introduced me to two billionaires the other day. I was like, who are you hanging out with? <laughs> wow, that, Shaq, is, that is telling. Shaq has no idea who he's talking about. He doesn't know who Tom Segura is. No. So Shaq's just no. laughing. Ah, yeah, right? He two just met Bert. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So, and Shaq hangs out with billionaires all the time. Probably. Well, yeah, of course. All these guys do. Yeah. So that's, that's nothing new for any of these guys. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. He's like, he's dead inside. Yeah. He introduced me to two billionaires. Who is this guy? I don't even recognize this guy anymore. So then I, I want to get to a certain part, but I feel like I have to play this first. We're 12 minutes into the interview, and I should mention that Shaquille O'Neal is one of the hosts, and then Adam Lefko. And Adam Lefko has the Lefko show on Bleacher Report. He's also on TNT's Tuesday NBA programming. So, and you might notice that the last time we checked in on Shaq, things look very different. It's no longer a Zoom show. Shit. He's doing it from his house. He's got the nice big studio set up, multi-camera shoot. Looks very professional. Amen. So we're only 12 minutes into the show, and they already don't know what to ask Bert, because as I mentioned, Shaq doesn't know who he is. And so he decides to ask Chat GPT what oh. questions to ask. Oh. I, got, I asked Chat GPT what questions that Bert and Shaq <laughs> would enjoy together. One of them that came up was, imagine you're both in a buddy cop movie. What are your character names and what's the most ridiculous situation you'd find yourself in? Oh, what a stupid question. So dumb. Oh, my character name would be My Nizzle. Okay. Because I would love to hear him say, what's up, My Nizzle? <laughs> <laughs> so only to get him to say it. Yeah. <laughs> what's up, My Nizzle? <laughs> oh, that's so awkward. I love it's it. the worst question. But also, it is a terrible question. Yeah. And Bert, the comedian, 
should have probably had an answer for that. And of course, Shaq had to do it instead. Here's what I would have said. I would have said, so I asked chat GPT what questions to ask you. And they were so stupid. I'm not going to use them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Just move on. But the wow. reason why I wanted to play that is because we're talking about uh, Tom Segura dead inside. All he cares about is money and having rich friends. So then Bert says that he'd be squirt. So it'd be squirt and manizzle. And my clip number eight is uh, where this goes to. <laughs> Someone draw up that artwork. I'll repost it. Yeah, uh, we can sell it. You know, you, you the way no, the world's we, we working, can, we yeah. can sell that yeah, to Netflix. Can, yeah, I got easily. Ted on speed dial. <laughs> yeah, easily. You, you know Bezos. You know yeah. Ted. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get our billionaire friends together. Yeah. Oh God. Wait, I thought he didn't like meeting billionaire friends a minute ago. No, he's got about speed dial. <laughs> True. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so you stupid. Know that, you know that thing called speed dial that we all use? And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then clip number 11, uh, Bert is once again bragging about how much money he has. Now, I'm, I'm taking this a little out of context, so I'll explain. They were ta- telling a story, I guess there's a basketball player who is 20 years old and dating like a 39-year-old woman. Yeah, yeah we talked about him. Okay, so they're talking about that, and they're like, Bert, what do you think about that? And Bert says, I think it's fucked up that really old people would date people like that young. And this is what he says. You, my you know how easy it would be for me, 20-year-old? I can impress her so much. Like, I could just take her, put her on a private jet. She'd be like, whoa. And then I'd be like, yeah, this is what we do. Oh, what an ass. <laughs> That's relatable. Yeah. Sounds like he's thought about it. Sounds like he's <laughs> yeah, good thought about it. Sounds like he's done it. <laughs> <laughs> so oh God. the the whole private jet and stuff like that. Yeah. Th- these are the, these are the reasons why people don't like these guys anymore. That's why they're annoyed because they used to be just like down to earth, like every man. Uh, you know wh- uh, when when do you know that a show has taken that turn south? Isn't it when the comments are more shitty than they are nice? You yeah, that, say that's everything? a good point. I, I see that happen in subreddits first subreddits <laughs> will start off as fans and then they'll quickly turn and get drowned out but when the youtube comments change that's when you know things are bad yeah subreddits are horrible uh you have a pretty yours isn't quite that bad honestly but yeah some of the Dabbleverse uh, members have some pretty brutal subreddits i gotta say oh, I, I gotta tell you my subreddit just real quick getting back to the live show a guy got kicked out and, oh, what happened okay there there was a guy And it's very, you know, the lights are on me on stage. I can't really see people out in the audience. And all I hear is some guy yelling out and and booing and making noises. And I was thinking about addressing it, but I didn't want to shine a flashlight on it or anything. So I didn't say anything. We just kept doing the show. And then I find out after the show, because I didn't know anything that was going on, that there were police there and they escorted him out. Oh, Oh, wow. He was uh, highly intoxicated. He, he posts, then he goes to Reddit and posts that I kicked him out. I called the cops on him and had him kicked out of the show. <laughs> well, and I'm an asshole. He doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he admitted in the, the text that he was putting on the subreddit that he was blackout drunk at the time and came to sometime around the time he was being escorted out by the police. But he, he thinks it was my fault. I was like, well, sir, I, just so you know, I was hosting a podcast, a live podcast at the time. I wasn't calling the police up. You well, dick. Hopefully it shows up on a cop cam one of these days. And there's a better story than oh, we even know. We talked about that. So my buddy Royce for Revenge of the Sis said, we could do a FOIA request to get the cop cam footage. You can come on the show. We can, we can watch it. I was like, yes, okay, let's definitely yeah, do that. Buddy. For sure. <laughs> That'd be wow. Fun. Let's back up to where Shaq gets introduced, or I'm sorry, Shaq introduces Burt Kreischer, because this is a rough way to start an hour-long interview podcast. Yeah, this, this is a painful. My, my first clip out here, Mark. Burt, before we get started, I owe you an apology. Why? I know your face, of course. I know who you are. Never yeah. knew your name was Burt. For real? Yeah, never, I never knew you, because I, I came down and I was like, bro, who the f- is Burt Kreischer? <laughs> and then when you walked in the door, I was like, oh, him? You're a funny dude. Thank you. So, I really know you from not knowing your name. Now I know your name and your face. Question. Shoot. Because I thought I was the number one party guy. Did Rolling Stone really name you the number one party guy? Oh, God. Oof. Oh, tough what, question. What a lame wow. question to start with. Yeah. That's, oh that's a God. tough one right there. You know that kills Bert to not be known. Yeah. Well, he spent the, the better part of an hour making Shaq fall in love with him. Correct. And I, I do have those clips I want to get into, but... I want to point out when Suttering John used to do his red carpet interviews with celebrities, 
one of the questions they would give him quite often to ask the celebrities is who are you and why are you famous? <laughs> because <laughs> nothing pisses off celebrities more than not being recognized. <laughs> oh, that's and, and, you know, I'm just thinking about the booking process that, of that show. So Shaq doesn't even get asked about the guests. That's pretty sick. That's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was. I, it's not like you would have TJ Miller on and be like, "All right, so how, how do I know you? Have you been in something I've seen?" <laughs> no. Well, that's what happens when everyone has a podcast. I don't know what they're doing. I saw that you actually made it out to TJ Miller's show. Good job, Drew. I did. Yes, I am <laughs> retired <laughs> briefly. It was great, by the way. Really good. Awesome. Very funny. All right, so yeah, this is Bert trying to impress Shaq with his knowledge of Shaq's basketball. By my clip number two, he's he wants to impress him because they're. You know, Bert's a Florida guy, mm. and Shaq got drafted by Orlando, so he's going to try the, to impress him here. That's the weakest connection in the world. But he, so lose, he loses his train of thought mid, midway through. <laughs> in high school, the magic showed up. You and, and Anthony were uh, my, one of my favorite names, <laughs> Anthony Hardaway. Just Penny Hardaway was a bad boy. Yeah, he was. And, uh, but you guys... Like you guys made Orlando fun, so we go to Orlando, go to Magic games, and you and because you know, but uh, I don't know what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, sometimes I love Bert. I don't know why. <laughs> He's just so stupid. He's so stupid. So later on in the show, they're talking about the Tyson Paul fight, and Bert says that certain athletes get his dick hard. <laughs> When he, when he watches them. I, I do want to point out that this show is censored. They take out all the swear words. They don't bleep them. They just mute them, which is, by the way, the better way to censor something. So I appreciate that. Bleeps are annoying. But th that's why it's going to sound like it's dropping out. It's not. It's Carl, like, why, that's a strong disagree for I me. Disagree I, I like well. the bleeps. Why oh, they, really? I, the why bleeps why do they do that? Why, do they, why will they not have the swear words in there? Is it because the general insurance company is advertising on the show? I don't know. Or is it Probably. recruiter? Probably. Zip recruiter, yeah, I don't know why. That's Are you going to get to the part about Zip Recruiter where they tried to make Zip Recruiter part of the show? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't pull that part, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, is that Dude, horrible? It was, it was such a funny segue because Adam goes, now, Shaq, you love Zip Recruiter, right? He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know what, doesn't even know what Zip Recruiter is. You know, like when you're building a basketball team, you got to get yeah. the best oh, yeah. players in the best position. <laughs> the, it's the same with the business. Yeah. You know, last time you did a show um, with us, uh, whose show was it? it was uh, the, the the Cyrus women, yeah. the Cyrus ladies. Mm -hmm. Right. And they did an ad for Jennifer Aniston that her shampoo is cruelty free. Yes. And yeah, you pointed that out. Cruelty free? Are they shooting champagne into or uh, shampoo into dogs or something to test it on most shampoos? Cruelty free and vegan yeah. were the big selling points. So you messaged me. You go, "What's that all about?" So I actually Googled it, and apparently there is a lot of animal testing mm -hmm. when it comes to shampoo. A ton, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So apparently that is so a real they do thing. do something horrible to animals with shampoo that we didn't know about. But frankly, I would rather use one that's been tested on. All the animals and none of the animals, right? I don't want to be the animal to be tested. Jennifer on. Aniston can't allow that. She yeah. can't put up with that. It's one of her main selling points. It's just shampoo. I mean, what are you going to do? Put it in your pee hole? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Hurt, <laughs> no, they inject it in dogs. I'm convinced. Don't, don't, they kink, must be doing don't that. kink shame me, Carl. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was my bad. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so this is uh, my, my clip number 12 talking about the Tyson-Paul fight, and uh, this is, again, kissing Shaq's ass. There are a few athletes, him being one, where their highlight reel gets my card. <laughs> I'm like, what the? Like, so this is what amazing. Shaq plays really oh, get you dude. done. When they did the doc, they did the doc, ESPN did the doc <laughs> about him and Penny. Rock hard. Buddy. So you watch Shaq a slam it down? Shaq with the delts. Just, I mean, look, the old Shaq, when you got jacked again, that was pretty awesome. But like you young with that, like just youthful energy, just <laughs> owning that court. It was so <laughs> awesome to watch. I thought it was going to be a euphemism. I didn't think he actually, his physique is what turned him on. Yeah. No, I know. I, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. I've never gotten sexual pleasure out of a sporting event. No, but I could see you saying, you know, I got hard over Jim Kelly taking us to four Super Bowls or whatever. Right. It's like a joke. But yeah, not right. his physique. No. It <laughs> yeah. is youthful energy. That was so weird. <laughs> that was so very awkward. Weird. That's great. 
And then uh, right. are you going to do the part where um, where he is turned into Shaq and what he's going to do first as if that wasn't obvious? Oh, I didn't pull that clip. So I found it stupid. But they, <laughs> they said if you were Shaq in his prime, what would you do? And Bert goes, I would immediately take off all my clothes and look in the mirror. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, he wanted to look at Shaq's feet and his hog and, and his dick. Like yeah, so he could tell Drake to suck it because his dick is so big because he's Shaq. It's so weird. No, it's totally this is weird. So bizarre. <laughs> was, like, Real what? quick, getting back to the uh, the conversation around the fight, I thought that Shaq had a really good line here because they're talking about Bert asked him, "What was it that happened to you that you realized I need to retire from basketball?" And so my clip number thirteen here, Shaq gets a good line in. What was the thing on your body that said? Um, I'm done. When I had to pump fake the dunk. When I had to pump fake to get up and down, uh, and then I look at the stats and I got nine points, I'm like, this ain't check. This is Dwight Howard. Love that was a fun he's dig. really cool. I love Shaq. I, I, yeah, I, mean, I mean, it's not his fault they booked Bert Kreischer. <laughs> well. I mean, right. he could take a little command of it and yeah. say, I don't know who this guy is. All right, so let's back up. Getting back to the early part of the interview, they're talking about uh, Van Wilder. was based on that Rolling Stone article about Burt. And so my, my clip number three, I'm sure Burt's tired of talking about this, but he could do a better job with it. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, the, you know the movie Van Wilder? Oh, I love that movie. Okay, how about this? <laughs> Came out while I was in high school. Right. Changed the way that I approached college. It was based off of him. Seriously? Uh, well, loosely, yeah, I guess. I didn't have anything to do with the movie. I didn't make oh, it. But that, that article. That article that you mentioned. Hold on. Hold on. So the dog rolls. I, I, mean, I never saw the movie. I never <laughs> saw the movie. <laughs> so my Carl. question is, he's never seen this movie that was based on him when he was in college. Um, first off, that's probably not true. No. Right. There's Secondly, no if way. you haven't seen it, why not? Everyone yeah. brings it up in all these interviews. Maybe watch it so it's you can talk about actually it. Actually, a good movie. There's no way he hasn't watched it. There's, I think he says that so that people will think it's more like him than it is. I love that movie, and I actually kind of hate it a little bit now that I know that it's based off Burt Kreischer. So, damn. Right. No, I like the movie, too. But that is a bummer. Right. It is, it is a fun movie. But while we're talking about his time in college, this is something that Drew picked up on. I probably would not have pulled this clip. But they're talking about, did you always know you wanted to be a comedian? He says, well, no, no. At first, I thought I was going to be an athlete. My clip number five or four here. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an athlete, really. When I was a kid, That's I was real serious. And then I went to go to play baseball at Florida State. And I, but the first day, I was like, this is not, for, I'm not this. I remember the coach told me I had a pledge pin on. He was like, you can take that shit off now. He was like, there's no partying on this team. And I was like, I think I'm going to focus on partying. <laughs> That is such bullshit. Total bullshit. You either have a scholarship to play at Florida State, they're one of the best teams in the country, or you're in a walk-on trial with 300 guys. A, or a preferred walk-on, yeah. Yeah, no, and that coach ridiculous. does not know his fucking name. That's so no. ridiculous. Uh-huh. Why would you wear your pledge pin? Well, it's burnt. Uh, it's <laughs> absurd. It's, yeah, it's, it's also stupid. And I, I have news okay. for him. Florida State baseball players do party. Yeah. <laughs> I can't right, so, yeah, they're, they're sneaky about it. Oh, yeah. that's, the, that's the whole point. Yeah, like, maybe a little. And by the way, everybody wanted to be an athlete when they were a kid, right? I mean, that's right. Oh, that just sounded so easily yeah. just fake as fuck. Come on, Bert. Well, that's his whole yeah, thing, that, though. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he makes up a lot of lies mm-hmm. like we uh, learned about from Crack and Miko. Yeah. yeah. So, there you go. so then there's a question about how crazy his life has been. It's obvious to me that Adam Lefko is a big fan, he's probably the one who booked him. Because he's going, Bert, I've been following you throughout your career. It's it's crazy. This is my clip number five. Bert brings us to a very weird place that I want to analyze with you guys. <laughs> I what's so cool is like I'm sure the Van Wilder thing is annoying to talk about because I feel like you've lived so many different lives at this yeah. point. And I've I've witnessed you go through all of these stages. So you had the one where it's like now we're on like Discovery Channel or Travel Channel or something like that. And we're yeah. doing a show and then we have a podcast launching with Segura. And then it's like you got a mach- you got the machine on Netflix, which yeah. had to be like a full circle. Like how many lives do you think you've lived at this point? Oh, I, I think about my funeral a lot. Like I think about like just someone who's like a casual, like dating one of my friends, you know, and then he shows up and she's like, yeah, I knew this guy. And then they tell my life story and they're like, holy. Wow. Oh my God. What an ego. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so can you imagine Christ. he needs everyone to think he's cool 
even theoretical people who he won't ever meet who show up at his funeral. That's weird, right? Yes. Well, remember him crying about, you know, thinking, I was just thinking about being dead and, you know, people going, uh, I wish Bert was here. Remember that? He got, yeah. he got choked up on a show crying. He's like, don't you think it'd be cool if people were just like, man, it'd be better if Bert was here with us today? Why, it, why do you think like that? I, it made him cry thinking that people would be thinking that because it would be I, so sad when he dies. <laughs> It's so, it's so weird. It was Eagle so bizarre. Yes. All right. So later on, they bond over what they call pool showers. Now, apparently, when you're rich, you can get up, work out, jump in the pool, and then start your day. And uh, I guess that both Shaq does this as well as Bert. And for whatever reason, Tom Segura makes fun of Bert for doing this. So because they're talking about it, Bert has to call, but no, not call FaceTime. Oh God. Tom Segura. And I, I don't know if this is like a thing where he feels like he needs to bring his celebrity friends in because Shaq doesn't know who he is. <laughs> and he's not and interesting. He has to show he's a big time, big deal or something, but this doesn't go the way that he thought it was going to go. Oh, Tommy, he's made fun of me for pool showers my whole life. Really? And he's, I was like, dude, it's the best. Yeah, Ice cold best. pool. Yeah. Get in there, wake up. I got rituals. I swim from one side underneath under the water and back to do my breath holds. Oh, shut up. COVID. Yeah. And so, of course, he doesn't answer. I don't trust people who don't answer FaceTimes. Yeah, I'm going to leave a message. Oh, it's a FaceTime. I'll just send him. I'm going to leave a message. Uh, but he, There's no have FaceTime. FaceTime messages. I know how to leave a message. Give me a phone, Bert. Okay. I know what I'm doing. Jeez. Swipe down. The camera's right there. Yep. You I'm too. Picture my you know what I'm talking to? Dude, it looks good today. Who's this? Tom Segura. Tom Segura. Who's this? Hey, Tom, this is Bert's twin brother. I take <laughs> pool showers, too, so leave him alone. I'm going to kill you. Okay. He know, made that funny. Yeah, it, it, was, it was going nowhere, and he made that funny. That just reminds me. I have it in my breath holds today. Will you remind me later? <laughs> <laughs> your breath holds. Fuck oh. you. Your breath holds. Oh, my God. What wow. an asshole. So stupid. <laughs> All right. This next clip, I don't know what you thought about this, but the setup is Shaq is asking Bert about what's his policy on his daughter's dating because Bert has like a 19 and a 17 year old daughter. The one is off to college. I think the other one's going to go to college soon. And so Bert claimed he makes up the story that I think, again, is completely fake. My, my clip number 10. Being someone's child, especially if you're like known as partying. When George went to college, like dudes were knocking on her door every day. Like, I want to party with the machine. Mm. George was like, that's not who I am. I read books. <laughs> Oh, God. He's yeah. saying that when his daughter went to college, dudes were showing up every day to party with the machine. No. It's it's like like the he's dad. there? Those, those, at her college, they're probably Matt Rife fans. Yes, that, that's what I was going to say. This is the thing about, and you know, Bert's very popular. Don't get me wrong. He's yeah, very he famous. Is. I agree. But his movie flopped. His shows are shrinking. I don't think college kids are all going nuts about Bert Kreischer. No. Mm-mm. I don't think that's this demographic. You know, Carl, he goes on to say about his daughter getting married. I, I just hope she doesn't marry a fan. <laughs> yes. You fucking asshole. Somebody don't want to marry your daughter him. because they're a fan of her dad. What a jackass. <laughs> I'm not buying it. I can't believe it. Like it. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> I know. It's so stupid. What would they do at his funeral, too? <laughs> a fan and his daughter. <laughs> All right. So the wish my was there. <laughs> my clip number 14 they're trying to wrap things up. We're 45 minutes into the show. And this is the last question here. This is not a great question. Uh, I want to end with this. I know that coming and hanging out with Shaq, especially for someone like you, is a big deal. Yeah. I want to get the f*** out of the way. Is there anything that you've always wanted to say to Shaq or you've always wanted to ask Shaq that this is the perfect time for it to happen? Before you answer, I give you permission to say whatever the hell you want to say. No. No, when you well, talk, starting no, now. Please, no, no, I'm talking about in any one of your stand ups, you want to say anything crazy about the shack, you have my permission. No, I got no, I got, I honestly, this, this I, like, I'm a little overwhelmed. Like, all my questions are like, I think I got them out. Like, mm. you know, like, I, 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 I don't blame Bert <laughs> on this one. That's a terrible question. It's awful. On the spot. I just realized, uh, and Carl, I'm sure you probably picked up on this. Is, does Adam book these guests, and did he want to book Bert's so he can be more in the show? 
Is that what happened? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch Shaq enough to know what his role is. It seems like, and actually, I have a clip coming up that will explain this. It seems like Shaq puts zero prep into these episodes. So Adam probably has to do all the prep. And yeah, it's easier to talk to someone you know and admire, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, you need Adam a lot more when it's someone like Bert Kreischer. He has no fucking idea who he is. And so Adam is more in the show. So maybe Adam likes that. Or maybe Adam has to be. Who knows? Maybe, yeah. But I, I got to say, that's a tough question. I did an interview with this guy named Matthew Cox. He's a YouTuber. He was a con artist who spent like seven years in federal prison. And now he does these shows where he talks to other criminals and mafia people and FBI agents. He does this really cool behind the scenes true crime stuff. And wow. he uh, discovered our show. So when we were down in Tampa, I drove to his house and did an interview with him. So I'm in his house. He's got a producer. We're doing a show. And uh, I'm not the usual guest. So he's, he's asking me questions and we're, you know, interesting podcasts I've reviewed and stuff like that. So about an hour and a half in, he looks at me, he goes like, so what else uh, do you want to talk about? What else, what else is there? And I go, uh, who are these dot coms where you go to find everything? Thanks so much for having me. Because at that point, the it's interview's over. over. Like, okay, over. now what do you want to say? It's like, yeah. okay, this is no longer a conversation. Yeah, you're the guest too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so sounds, that, like that an sounds like an interesting channel though. No, he's very interesting. I actually, Drew, I should send you the link. I watched an episode he did with this guy who escaped Scientology. That was oh, fascinating. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, I definitely want to check it out. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm mad that we didn't get a chance to visit all the Scientologists when we were down in Clearwater. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have uh, a whole thing going on. So, so you could tell that Bert wants to be friends with Shaquille O'Neal because he's at this clip, my clip number 15, he's talking about getting his phone number and texting with him. And then Shaq interrupts Bert multiple times with nonsense. I'm, I'm telling you, I don't think Shaq understands what he's saying right here. Like I just, I just want to get his number and I just want to keep texting. You can have it. You can text me at W. I don't sleep. <laughs> and I, you don't sleep for real? No. How, like, how bad is your sleep? Well, it's not as bad. I just, I just stay up and smoke my hookah. Yeah. Yeah. I was with. I was People with. always tell me, "Oh, you need to take melatonin." I'm not, I'm not taking nothing to help me go to sleep. That. I, I was the thing about me not sleeping though is I always get six, seven hours in. So, oh, yeah? Yeah, so I went to bed about four last night. What? Woke up at 12.51 and came out here at 12.58. Wait, so he does sleep. That's called sleep. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, he goes, I, he goes, I don't sleep. He's like, well, what do you mean? How do you, how can you not sleep? <laughs> well, no, no, I get seven hours in. <laughs> <laughs> but I also found it hilarious that he, he woke up at 1 p.m., <laughs> 1 in the afternoon, and his show starts at 1 in the afternoon, so he rolled out of bed and was just like, who the fuck is this guy? What, what are we talking about? <laughs> oh, man. I could never do that. Hey, I want to go back a minute to the FaceTiming with Tom Segura. There was a funny thing on March Madness on Saturday because Kenny Smith was claiming that he FaceTimed with Charles and Charles was like, no, 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 dudes don't FaceTime. I don't FaceTime with dudes. And I thought, God, I would never FaceTime with a guy. Why is Bert no. FaceTiming yeah. with Tom? Uh, it's and, weird. And why does he say I don't trust guys who don't accept FaceTimes? Like, Tom's a very busy guy. He's got a lot going on. He's probably in the middle of something. It's also kind of gay FaceTiming with a dude, isn't yeah. it? I, I, I'll tell you, the stupid thing about the Apple phone is that the FaceTime and the call buttons are right next to each other. So you can fat finger FaceTime <laughs> oh, pretty yeah. easily. I've done, it. Oh, yeah. I've done it a few times and I'm immediately like, oh shit, no, 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 no. I'm not trying to, I don't need to see you right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, to me, it's like calling 911 by accident. That's right. how fast I hang up. <laughs> hang up, hang up, hang up. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was weird too. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I was going to say something about that. Yeah, Bert does it with a lot of people too, which is ugh, creepy. All right. If you guys remember, this is going back a ways, but we were checking out Shaq's podcast on this show. And I just happened to find Shaq talking about going to the zoo <laughs> and uh, what he likes to do when he walks after the gorillas. <laughs> and uh, I remember we played it on this show and then Anthony Kumia played it on his show. And I was like, wow, this is some find that I had just pulled a random episode. <laughs> Apparently, though. This is like turned into a thing now <laughs> because listen to this question from Adam, my, my clip number 16 here. I've, we've, I've mentioned this a few times. It needs to happen. What do you think happens when Shaq goes to the zoo? How, if there's one animal that's going to react, you mentioned it earlier. <laughs> trying to get me canceled? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's one of our favorite stories. We're going to go to the Atlanta All the animals are going to be like, how the f*** did he get out? <laughs> 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 Wait, get over here. Unlock my cage. <laughs> no, bro, so that's what happens. Are you serious? Yes, yes. all the time. Yeah, yeah, all the time. 
<laughs> so this is the thing. And then Shaq goes out. I don't know if you got this far into the show, Drew. Shaq goes on to say he goes to zoos wherever he goes. Like he always, every city he's in, he goes to the zoo and fucks with gorillas. I didn't get that far. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> so weird. That's like his thing now. It's like a bit he does. Wow. He says every time he goes in there, the gorillas try to fight him. They <laughs> run up and start pounding. And, what the fuck? It's like, I, I think they think I'm going to fuck their women or something. <laughs> Holy shit. That's great. Yeah, it's so crazy. So then my last clip on here, 17, um, Bert has a ridiculous uh, thought when he brings up gorillas. <laughs> I started doing a gorilla impression to him, and the gorilla went like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, shut up. I just transcended. <laughs> yeah. I would love a, a gorilla. It would be awesome. Like to have a gorilla <laughs> shut, carry me around. When I'm having an anxiety attack, he just gets in the bed. Yeah. What? Oh, there's so many things there that are so confusing. He wants to have a gorilla to, because when he has an anxiety attack, it could crawl into bed with him. That would cause anxiety for me. I, I don't think that would help. Yes. What the fuck is he talking about? He doesn't even know. I don't, I don't think anyone knows what he's talking oh, about. Oh, man. Yeah, there's enough material for Crack Amico to do another song there, I think. For sure. So wow. that is uh, Bert Kreischer meeting Shaquille O'Neal. We'll see if they uh, maintain this friendship <laughs> yeah, over time. I'm sure they're FaceTiming insane. right now. Great stuff and uh, great show in, in Florida. I really enjoyed that show. And also, I, I'm hoping one of these days you'll bring Woke Dad to uh, to our show from oh. Who These Socials. Woke Dad, Dad is one of my favorite Remind me things. next time. Uh, so this guy, Daniel Alexander, is on TikTok. And uh, this guy is saving the world one conversation at a time, and he reports on it on his TikTok page. He goes, ah, I ran to this guy at the supermarket today, and the person wasn't as tolerant of gays as he should be. So I lectured him, and then he said, oh, you know what? You're right. I'm an idiot. Yeah, and then uh, we cried together. No, you didn't. And then we cried, then we <laughs> held each other and cried. <laughs> no, like, he tells these stories that are so made up and nonsense, but he's sincere. And every comment underneath is like, I'm glad there's people like you in this world. You're you're saving it. It's crazy. He actually has changed legislation. He goes down to the Capitol and protests and stuff. He's nuts. Yeah, he called the, um, I think it was like a, a Walmart or a drugstore clerk by her pronoun that was on her name tag. And yeah. she ended up crying. And I was funny because Blind Mike said, oh, and they carried him out of the store. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed very hard. Well, he's, he's got a, a trans kid. So that's why he's all hyper focused on this stuff. And I don't know how old the kid is. I'm guessing very young. Is that what you picked up? Yes, on definitely. It seems like it, right? No, it sounds like it. But that, no, yeah. who are these socials? I, it's funny. I've always loved WATP, but I've really started to love who are these socials. You guys have really found a few things that work <laughs> every week. Um, and who's the other one? Chili DeCastro? Oh, I was just going to bring that up. So delete laws, Chili DeCastro, the guy who inserts himself into every altercation with police. So there'll be like someone just gets pulled over for speeding and he has to run up and yell at the cop and interfere. There's a, yes. an accident. To or, keep or, the cop. Or, to keep the cop from killing the person. Right. He'll go into the precinct and call everyone a pig and, and fuck with them. Oh. He is in jail right now. He's serving oh, 180 good. days. Hey. Yes. <laughs> oh, and he because got he got we, schooled by the judge, too. I loved it. Yeah, we played the clips on this most recent episode of Who Are These Socials, where he goes in there and he's calling cops pigs in the courtroom and he's carrying on. He's like, it's the First Amendment. He calls himself a constitutional scholar. Meanwhile, he's in there talking about the First Amendment. And they're like, no, 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 you're obstructing official business. You're going to jail. And the judge was like, I don't, I didn't want to throw you in jail. I didn't want to sentence you like this. But the way you behaved in my courtroom today, I'm giving you the maximum penalty. It was great. Oh. No, I, I, you know, I hate being that guy who's on the side of the judge and the DA and all that and something silly like that. But I, I was just so perfect. I mean, he's such a dick. I can't believe he's allowed to keep doing what he's doing because there was one thing where somebody was pulled over speeding and he somehow... He heard the the officer repeat her name. He called her mother to tell her that she was all right. Yeah, I'm at I'm at her stop. She's getting stopped. She uh, got a speeding ticket or something. And the mom's like, "What?" And she's like, that "Don't was call the girl, my mom." That was the girl who all of her friends left the Denny's, so she was stuck with a check and couldn't pay it. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> yeah, right. And then he had to call her mom and tell her he was watching over her. And then oh. don't worry, the cops aren't going to murder your daughter. She's like, I didn't think they were going to murder. Her. Why are you telling me that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such that's a crazy. dick. No, that was great. I was on last week's with these uh, socials. If you want to see it, Carl, great week. Uh, thanks again. And we'll talk to you real soon. Guys. Thanks so much. See you, bud. You bet. Later.